hey guys, welcome to Russian Designs. You catch you in the middle of port and polishing an ABF lower half of the inlet manifold. Why am I doing this? Today's video is a how-to on this. There will be other things included in today's video. Um, basically, a customer's come in for, they want to replace the coolant flange on the front of the ABF cylinder head, and it's kind of tucked up underneath said inlet manifold like so. And I basically, I don't want to break the kind of the five mil, because they're five mil Allen keys as well, so they can actually slip on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the inlet manifold. I'm going to show you guys one how to replace this. You're going to basically gonna break it off, uh, shock the bolts, and then take them off and replace that. That's the main reason. But also taking advantage, we're going to port and polish the uh, the inlet manifold. Now, this kind of goes in conjunction with another video I've done, which the link should be up here, which is the throttle body porting. Kind of take the wedges off where VW's kind of put them in to kind of soften the throttle response, as well as it is a bit restrictive, so you kind of get a sharper throttle response. The inlet manifold in these are more kind of torque based for power. They kind of, they are limited on what you, you can kind of get out of the ABF engine, partly due to the inlet manifold. Um, you can kind of mess around a bit, cut and weld it and stuff, but ultimately throttle bodies, ITBs is what you need to kind of get the most out of an ABF with head work and cam work and stuff. On the standard engine, even with a kind of a mild set of cams, you kind of, you can still kind of get the most out of those cams to a degree with the standard inlet manifold. But the main thing with this inlet manifold is it sits on top and it does kind of a 180 to go into the head almost to, uh, to feed the inlet ports. Now, airflow works fine when it's in a straight line. Doing a 180 curve like that, it's actually, uh, you're gonna lose a bit of velocity, airspeed doing that. Now, the bottom half, I'm gonna show you here. This is the standard gasket. It's pretty well, matched perfectly to the actual inlet manifold itself. But um, it does have quite big casting marks running down both sides of it. So basically all you're gonna do is with some basic tools, I'm gonna show you what I've got here on the bench. We're gonna kind of, you know, polish it, smoothing it off, as well as on the upper half of the inlet manifold, it's actually poorly matched to this gasket. So it leaves you with a step which is gonna cause even more turbulence. So as well as you actually having, losing air speed because of that 180 degree, you know, different direction of air, you've also got steps as well. And, but you're not gonna be able to get all the way into the inlet manifold, obviously because of the curve. We can only do literally just a bit of the curve. Are you gonna notice any gains? Uh, maybe not. Are you gonna lose anything? No. So there's only to be gained from this. So I'm gonna take advantage by doing this, gonna remove the inlet manifold, gonna actually, luckily I've actually got one of these spare laying around the lower halves. So I'm going to quickly port and polish this and then we'll take off the inlet manifold and we'll do the same to the top half of the inlet manifold and I'll show you how to replace this. But let's get into it guys. Easy for the job. No special tools really, apart from maybe this one which came off a port and polishing kit I had, a quite an old one. But you can kind of imitate this with some scotch pad basically on a, on a bit of a, a, a bolt or something. You can kind of imitate that, that's kind of the end. So. Basically, we've got some of these from, you get this from a hardware sh store, some uh, 60 grit, 80 grit, 120 grit. Uh, we're gonna need this for the upper part. I mean, if you can't find this aluminium burr, you can use the steel ones, but they do tend to clog up and it kind of seems to bounce on, kind of just bounce basically on the material that you, on aluminium it does. Whereas this kind of, it cuts very cleanly, clean, it leaves a nicer finish than that does, but it does cut through aluminium very easily. So you need to be more careful with this kind of burr. But yeah, these are quite hard to find. These are plentiful. You can find these steel burrs. You can still kind of do a similar job to that. Basically just a, a normal kind of hand drill will do the job. I'd started already. I've done this one to show you guys kind of the finish that you want to go for. And these are the bits that you can see in there. Or maybe you can't see in there. Let me, let me see if we can zoom in with this. Hold on. There we go, those are the casting lines that I was talking about. And that's the kind of finish you want. Casting line gone, and it's smooth. Now if you kind of, if I stop talking, you can actually hear my finger. Compared to... Yeah, it's a lot smoother with what the air's got to kind of go through. So it speeds up the air, like I said. The air velocity increases because of this this bend. So now I'm just going to literally continue. As you can see, I've just started this one. 
a go at it first with the, the bigger bit. I think this is actually an 80 mil grit. It's a bigger thing. And then the little corners, what are left, you kind of go over them with the, the smaller wheels. Kind of get the majority of it done as you can see it kind of doesn't get into all the little gaps it's quite a pile isn't it of material that's come off there so now i'm going to move it on to the, the 60 grit smaller one i mean it does come in handy actually if you've got a die grinder because you're limited obviously by the that kind of uh the, how far you can go with this short space and also this hitting then the inlet manifold or the area that you're doing, but luckily it's quite a short part and we can get all into it very nice and easily. So here's the Mark III in question and there is the flange that we've got to do. As you can see, it's tucked up under the inlet manifold so to get access to the bolts, you have to use kind of a wobbly five mil allen key and you're more than likely going to round them off and then in doing so you're going to have issues and it just becomes a long-winded thing or you could actually snap the bolt in the head so it's always safer a, a lot lot it's a much bigger job but it's a safer job to remove the inlet manifold both parts and that's what we're going to be doing and that's why we could be put on polishing all right so let's uh let's crack on with starting removing these bits so the first thing we do is remove all the plugs, air temp, TPS, idle switch. Next, we'll get the whole air box out of the way. And moving on to the next thing, we've got three five mil Allen keys holding this trim on. So now that reveals the idle valve and a few more plugs. So we're going to remove the idle valve and the injector one. Remove the brake vacuum pipe, the accelerator cable. So next on the list, we've got eight in total, six mil Allen keys, and five of them we need to loosen and three of them we need to actually remove. Remove the vacuum pipe for the fuel pressure regulator. Remove the vacuum pipe for the PCD. Remove the pipe for the idle valve. And now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six mil Allen keys to remove. And we can actually remove now the top half of the inlet manifold. Oh, the vacuum pipe for the ECU. So now as you can see, the difference, look at that quite a bit isn't it so as you can see with the other half the gasket fits perfectly but yet on this side it's a lot smaller so we've got a good bit to take off here so what I'm going to do is get a red marker and mark off what needs to be removed hold the gasket in place so it lines up with all the holes So this is how much we've got to remove. There's quite a bit on each one. So now you see where this aluminium cutting bit comes in. Let's make a start. So I don't know if you're going to see in there, but that's the finish it kind of leaves, which is quite nice actually. And don't go all the way to the end of your red mark, because obviously you've got to be polishing this now. So, just moving it off, so you need to give yourself a bit of leeway, which I've just done there, you can see. Now, smoothing it off, it should go almost to the gasket, and that'll be perfect. So, and using the flat wheel, I've blended what I've done with the cutting this with the cutting burr, and as you can see, it's literally matched now perfectly to the gasket. So 
So now, it's got to do three more. So all blended in. Obviously, you're going to be limited on how far you can go. I've kind of just done maybe about, I don't know, 25 mil, an inch in, really. Blended it all in, so it's all smooth. And there you go, nice port matched. Bottom half, or well, top half and bottom half all done. That's clean. Now, the main event, why I'm actually doing this is actually to replace this. So let me show you guys how I'm going to go about replacing this and removing what's left of the lower half of the manifold. Right, so to remove what's left, we need to take off these two six mil Allen key bolts and then these three uh, Allen key bolts as well as five mil ones for the fuel rail, take the fuel rail off because obviously this holds the plug in place, the wiring, we can remove all of that. And then we've got another one, two, three, four, five, six other six mil Allen key bolts to remove. So now the fuel rail's ready to come off. Move it over to one side. And that then reveals one, two, three, four of the six mil Allen key bolts that need to come off. Now carefully remove this. And finally, we see the flange. So as you can see on the flange, I literally just put a little bit of pressure on it. Do you see, and the water's just coming out. So what we're gonna do is, and you can see they're quite rusty as well. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna continue pressing on it until it breaks. Cover up the ports, because you don't want water in your head. And now, we're gonna take off what's left of the flange, and then with a hammer, we're gonna shock these three bolts. Get the hammer out and give these a, a few good hits. And now hopefully, actually have to tap in the five mil Allen key as well. These soot should just literally crack off easily. There you go, look at that. Felt like it wasn't even tight. Oh, look at that beautiful. Last one, tap it in. And I bet it's the same as well. Yeah, look at that. Well worth the hassle. Just makes it easier. Sometimes the long way around is the easy way around. So as you can see, cleaned it up with a wire brush. Now, Make sure it's clean, as clean as possible and also make sure it's not pitted. Because I mean, if it's been leaking for a while, you know, you can actually maybe get a bit of corrosion in the aluminium. So let's put the gasket in there. Actually, what I'm gonna do is, probably make my life a bit easier, is actually put the bottom hose on first. Then we can put the fuel rail back on. The little clip actually that secures the wiring place that's actually falling out. There you go, that looks a lot better. Now we can just clip the loom to a little hole here. There we go. And now we can put the two bolts through and tighten those up. Plug the injectors back in as well. Also gave the rock cover a bit of a clean. So now it's just a matter of just putting it on. And then lining up the front six bolts first, time thing goes up, and then you put the brackets on at the back, the support brackets. So that's it. The reverse of putting everything back on, top up the coolant, turn up the cap, and take it for a test drive. All right guys, thanks for watching another how-to video. Please subscribe, please like, please comment if you have any questions and be safe guys.